So we open up this edition of Raw with John Cena coming to the ring to a, what was a pretty good reaction. And uh, he was pretty much talking a lot of nonsense. This segment was all done to set up the stipulation for the, for his match with Ryan back at Extreme Rules. So it ended up being a last man standing match. You had Vicky Guerrero out there, who's a heel or a face, whoever knows now. John Cena was mocking Ryback. Uh, I guess at least Cena sold the sort of sold it at the end when the stipulation was announced that he could actually be in trouble, uh, especially after he kind of mocked Ryback a lot, which I thought was silly. Extreme rules, backlash, Cena doing a last man staying. It's typical Batista, Edge, I'm pretty sure there's been someone else. It's roughly this time he goes into a last man standing. I'm just wondering how they're going to finish the result of this match. Yeah, at least this stipulation kind of covers both their weaknesses and they can just go out there and have a brawl and just, you know, have a, have a massive fight, which is how I think this match should feel as a main event. We have Randy Orton versus Damian Sandow. Uh, we kind of saw this on SmackDown, Orton won, but highlight of the show here, Damian Sandow's remix of Randy Orton's Voices theme. I thought that was a, a highlight of the year, personally. I guess when we need something that makes Sandow stand out... Giving him the mic time is where he shines. So for the WWE to give him also the music aspect, the comedy aspect against someone big as Orton definitely made him shine on this Raw. And very creative as well. You had Big Show KOing Orton on the stage, but we better, they never showed it live. They had to show a replay because they were too busy looking at Michael Cole. And Michael Cole was like, oh, look what's happening on the stage! The cameras didn't get it, though. It was bad timing there, but this match... Awesome big show. It's been building up, but I just don't really care. Nah, I'm kind of on the fence on that one. We had a segment where you had Jericho, Sweet Tea, and Brodus Clay judging Fandango's match against R Truth. This provided me with my second legitimate laugh of the evening. They scored R Truth highly and not Fandango. I just thought that was quite funny. I don't know why. Again, when the thing is, you can see how bad the Bucks are doing when they were doing a tug of war last week to show the strength of Mark Henry and Sheamus. This week they're being panel judges. But yes, the, it is continuation of Jericho vs. Fandango, which is going to the stream rules. I gave this segment a six. <laughs> Fandango walks out. I just wish this would, this would have gone a bit longer and we got to see a little bit more of the judging and stuff. That would at least have been funny. But the biggest highlight of this, really, was late in the night we get announced that next week there's going to be a dance-off between Chris Jericho, because they did talk about the fact that Jericho, Dancing on the Stars, how they judge me, Fandango's the voice like this, uh, next week and more. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that, actually. Um, Alberto Doria versus Dolph Ziggler with Zeb Coulter and Swagger on commentary. I just, I don't really care about this. I, I, I don't know why. I've seen these guys face off so many times, and this, this triple threat, it's kind of boring me. I mean, I, the only, my only one hope is that this, mat, this triple threat ladder match is going to be good, but the way they're building this up, I just I don't really care too much about this, really. The thing I like about this is that they're all ex Money Bank winners. They all have a reason to be involved in a ladder match. The build-up, yes. Yes, they're taking in turns. Del Rio getting up hand one week. Uh, swagger. And it goes around like that. So like this week, yeah. Yeah, they're building it up to get them all won over on each other. So they're doing it okay, just not the best they could for Extreme Wars. Yeah, as I said, their swagger ends up taking up Del Rio and Ziggler with the ladder, so making the heel look strong, even though Ziggler still feels like a mid card world champion, that's all I'll say. We have the Shield versus the Usos and Kofi Kingston. Boy, I didn't think the Usos were employed by WWE anymore, and Kobe Kingston has just had that match with Antonio Cesaro for the US Championship, and now he's on jobber duty again. No surprise the Shield won here, though. They should do. I'm glad to see the Usos back on a Raw SmackDown. That's another tag team that didn't actually go get the gold that they should have done, so they were just thrown in this match instead of 3 and B. And Kobe, who should really be doing something to do the US Championship, Chip to hype that ready up for Extreme Rules. Mid-card mid -card, mid -card belt holders doing jobs. Not really something right. WWE is known for. <laughs> Antonio Cesaro versus Zack Ryder. Cesaro wins and uh, he got on the mic afterwards, says the competition is ridiculous and that he is the best. And I'm, I'm sorry, but I just laughed at it when he said that. He says he's the best. <laughs> it's like, how are you the best, really? Come on. The ridiculous thing about this is that, yes, there's this thing that he's going to be facing Kobe Kingston, or Orton, sorry, on, I think it's... Which uh, will lose. Wednesday night, main yeah, event. blah, blah. But a feud for Cesaro, continuation of Kobe, I'm guessing for Extreme Rules, but 
He compares himself or says he's better than anyone else on each show. I'm just waiting for him to get proven wrong after Kofi. Yeah, I'm making it that. Prove it, Cesaro, because the crowd really didn't care about you on this one, and that's the problem. You need to get over, and you need to do something to get over. Um, Paul Heyman via Satellites. Uh, they were doing this whole storyline with Brock Lesnar going to WWE HQ. They were pretty much hyping this up throughout the night as if it was going to be the main event, but it was a nice use of backstage stuff or, you know, or outside of the arena stuff to try and hype up a storyline between Lesnar and Triple H. I like the way they went around this. Um, I don't think they did it the best they possibly could, but I still like the premise behind the way they did this. Even they, even though they didn't really hype this up last week, they did it a, a, a day before mm. Raw and just got you tuning into this big thing that's happening on Raw via the internet. It still worked out because the segment really paid off both Brock Lesnar's behalf, showing something different, and Triple H's half, which we got in the ring later. Yeah, so we got footage of Brock Lesnar going through to uh, HQ and, and uh, WWHQ and Heyman as well, destroying uh, what was supposedly Triple H's desk and office. And then you have Triple H coming out to the ring after Paul Heyman is on satellite and doesn't really seem to address the fact that they uh, destroyed his office. I mean, he didn't really seem to care all that much. He made a few comments by saying, you've done that office, now here's my home. This is where you should be. We got He got the crowd going, great crowd reaction. I thought, other than Sandow's thing, this was probably the best promo of the night. And again, even though it's happening for the third time, I enjoyed this segment more. Yes, AJ and the Bellas versus Funkadactyls and Caitlin. Bellas walk out, allowing Caitlyn to get the spear on AJ. Again, I said no. Was, I, how, why would I care about this segment? Um, this not even helped me get behind AJ any bit more. It just really gave Caitlyn what she deserved. Mark Henry laid out a challenge to Sheamus for Extreme Rules because after after two shows of being embarrassed by Sheamus, he was going to get embarrassed once again tonight as Sheamus faced Barrett in a match we've seen many, many times. Sheamus once again embarrasses Mark Henry. And Sheamus gets the victory over Barrett, another mid-card champion, doing another job for another main eventer. But then after the match, you have Mark Henry whipping Sheamus with the belt. It seems like it's going to be some kind of strap match at Extreme Rules, which is a, a, a decent stipulation to give this one. I looked down this match. Um, I said early in the night that the mid-card really needed something to build them up towards Extreme Rules. And both mid-card champions were just thrown as something they weren't really involved with. The Mark Henry and Sheamus match, you've been showing their strength over the last few weeks building up to this. Now they're just making a strap match. You don't need strength to be in a strap match, so I think you've just built up this strength for nothing. And plus, I don't care about this feud because it's still this is what I do versus this is what I do, fella. Yeah, but the, yeah. the strength is all about their characters, not really behind the match stipulation. But again, um, just move on. At least Henry got some heat. After being embarrassed by Sheamus three times in a row, it's just silly. Um, apparently, the highlight reel is going to be uh, involving Ryback on SmackDown. That should be a decent segment, you'd think. Jericho going in the ring with, again, that's what you should be doing these kind of in-ring segments. Mm. Be talking about a big match you want to be put over, like Piper's Pit, Edge's one. You know, just have, when they talk about main event matches, and have Ryback and Jericho, that could be a good way to... Get that match ready. And feature Ryback on SmackDown in a, in a big way. Uh, speaking of Ryback, he had a match versus Kane. Uh, this is all set up in a backstage segment after Daniel Bryan wanted to challenge Ryback again, but Kane came in. Um, when push comes to shove, Ryback gets the victory clean, as he should have done over a guy like Kane, who's in a tag team role right now. The, the main focus here was on the aftermath. You had the Shield come out. You have Ryback bailing, leaving Team Hono and Cena to come out and fight off the Shield. Only for Ryback to come in and hit and hit Cena with the chair to finally get some heat because so far Ryback really hasn't had any heat so far. And this is the first time I really think that he's had some proper heat as he stands tall over John Cena at the end of the show. Going past the open segment, the main event gave more of the strong being of extreme rules with the weapon usage. And I feel that with Ryback getting something over on scene in a strong way, yes, he got to choose the match type and got to finish Raw. So I think this was definitely Ryback's night. Yeah, and um, there were a couple of boring chants from the crowd as well, which is a bit disappointing, really. Um, so overall, this Raw, it just seemed to me like a, another average Raw, which 
not too much happened on. We still only have, what, four matches announced for Extreme Rules. We're about two weeks away. Please, WWE, can we get some more matches announced, please, for the pay view? We've got three big ones, but let's get some of these mid card matches at least, at least announced. So we don't get loads of last-minute matches, but just another better than usual let's yet still lackluster free hour of raw to me my compliment is we've got some entertainment quite a few segments that at least did something for extreme rules just as dan said there weren't matches made so overall it weren't a terrible raw so leave your thoughts on this raw down in the comment section below and from me mr parkin and this guy sitting next to me nj What's up? We are the British Fist. Catch it! And we are saying to you guys goodbye.